The Python ctype library is a special library in Python that's used to import functions from external libraries. These external libraries are compiled by languages like C++ and C, okay? There actually are some other languages that you can use, but those are like kind of extinct, like Fortran. Basically, it's just C and C++, okay? Just keep those two in mind. And those are the two that we'll be discussing in this tutorial, okay? Now, C types is actually a bit complex, okay? There are a few things to keep in mind. So, and there's quite a bit of content to cover. So we're gonna divide this over three videos, okay? The distribution is as follows. In this video, we'll cover how to import C types, how to set it up, how to generate libraries from C and C++ files, and how to import those libraries and call them within Python. And we'll discuss some different techniques of doing so, okay? In the next video, in video number two, we'll discuss strings with C types as well as memory management with C types. Because the issue is that Python doesn't have pointers where C and C++ do. So when you're importing a function from C or C++ that uses pointers, that uses dynamically allocated memory, you need to also worry about freeing up that data, okay? More on that in the next video though, okay? And in the third video, we'll take a look at, it, at how to actually use C++ with Python, okay? Because C types actually works better with C. Actually, I don't mean better as in it works without problems. What I mean is that it works easier with C, okay? There are a few special things to keep in mind and one or two things to actually change in your code when you're using C++ with C types. So there's gonna be a separate video on that. So yeah, I'm just giving you the entire outline here. There are three videos, okay? And only until you watch these three videos, you'll have a proper grasp over C types and how it's used, okay? So don't, don't try and skip, okay? And watching the first video isn't really enough on its own other than using C types in a very basic manner, all right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. I already have C types installed, okay? I installed it using pip install C types. If you don't have it installed, please do, and then we'll proceed, all right? Now, what I want you to do, the very first thing is, see, this is the folder I'm working in, okay? And I'm gonna make a new folder, sorry, a new file here. I'll call it C library.c. Okay, we're first exploring how to use Python with C. Okay, let's just take a look at this first. And let me just close that. All right, so the first thing I'll do is just import the basic library stdio.h. Okay, and I'll make a simple function void display and printf hello world. Now, the goal in this tutorial is going to be to print out this statement in our Python function. Sorry, in our Python in our Python file. Okay, this function we've defined it in the C library. Now our goal is to have this printed out, have this called in our Python file. Now, how do we do so? Well, the first thing we do is create a library object. Okay, like I'll call it. I'll call the object C library as well because it makes sense. Our library, our C library object and ctypes.cdill. This is the name of the function, okay? C-D-L-L, -L, okay? Dynamic link library, that's what DLL stands for. And this takes the name of the function, say, sorry, the name of the C file, okay? Actually, there's one step I almost forgot to mention is that this doesn't take the file path to the C file. It takes the file path to the C shared library. Okay, now what is that C shared library and how to generate it? Because you cannot use this .c file with Python. You need to compile this first. Okay, not an exe. What we need is a .so file. Now let's take a look at how to generate the shared file. Okay, the shared library that we're gonna be importing functions from. Okay, now I'll go over here into my terminal and then I'll type tutorials. Okay, because I'm navigating to the folder where my c library.c and c types tutorial.py file are. And here we go, I'm in there. Now, what I want to do is run this command, gcc fpic and shared and o, okay? Shared, because we're generating a shared library here, o for output. And over here, I'm gonna write the name of the shared file, okay, the shared library. 
And this is actually arbitrary. It can be anything. You could call it abc.so. One to actually, sorry, it can be one to three dot so. I don't think so. And basically, it can be anything as long as it has a dot so extension, which is a shared file, a shared library. Okay. And here, I'm going to write c library dot c, which is the source file from which the shared library is going to be generated. Okay. Just giving you an idea of what this command means. Now, run this command, and there we go. .so file just showed up in here. Now we don't care about what what's inside this. Okay, don't open this up. Don't don't even even bother. Okay, because it, it won't make sense anyway. So what you need to do is just import this. Okay, and I actually recommend just including the full path in here. Honestly, what is the full path? It's the because this can cause some problems even if it's in the same directory, which it is. But I'll still do this anyway. Tutorials and C types and see library.so. Okay, now let's just run this and see if there are any errors. And there were. Uh, this is an old terminal of mine that just popped up. Not sure why is that why that's happening. Let me just close all of these and new terminal. Okay, and just go back there. Even though I don't need to because I gave the full file path say types and let me run this again and this is creating a new terminal each time not sure why it's doing that but okay so what just happened here is that this code ran and no errors came up which means we have now imported this successfully now let me show you how easy it is to just call that function that we made earlier this done we're done I'll just call this and hello world has now been printed out we're done. There's our there's our code. Okay. Now let's take a look at some other things and some other ways that we can actually uh, call functions. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is just discuss how we can pass in different parameters in here. Let's take a look at how to pass in a string and an integer. I'll pass in John and a team. Okay. Let's pretend this is the name variable and this is the integer variable. I'll go back here and make the changes. Corrector, because remember, this is C. It's not C++. Okay, we don't have strings in C++. We have character arrays. That's our string. And this is our age. So I'll just change this a bit to um, my name is, and then we'll put that placeholder there. And my age is, then we'll put this placeholder in there. The first one is for the string, and the second one is for the integer. So there, that should be good. And what I need to do is actually regenerate this. So I actually need to go here, re-navigate over to that folder, and then call the GCC command again. Let me just see, uh, there we are. I just call this command again. Okay, it'll generate a new file, and now I can run this code. Because every time you make a change to the .c file, you need to regenerate the shared library and then use it, okay? Just be careful. There we go. Okay, it says my name is J. Uh, why is that happening again? I remember this error. I can't remember how to fix it. Oh, yes, I remember now. There's actually... Well, this is actually meant was actually meant to come in the next video, but it's okay. We'll just talk about this very briefly right now. Uh, basically, strings, you cannot pass a string over into the .c file normally, okay? And the reason for that is, well, it's complicated. We'll talk about that more in the next video. But basically, we need to convert this into a binary stream, okay? We need to include this little b in here, and now we can pass it in, okay? So if I run this now, it's going to work. It's going to pass in the correct name, okay? This is something important to keep in mind, and we'll get it more into this later. Don't worry, in the next video. Because strings is a very touchy topic. Because uh, to give you a very brief look into why there's a problem, because Python, in Python, strings are immutable, which means they cannot be modified. Okay? And in C, and C++, I think, or is it just C? I'm not sure. But in C, strings are mutable, which means they can be modified. Actually, come to think of it, C++ is also the same. Uh, you can actually modify strings, 
okay? Now, I know that might sound strange, but again, next video, okay? Let's talk about other stuff here first. Now, what I want to do is co come up with a slightly different way of calling this function. This is the first way, okay? This is the first method, the first way you can call a function. But what if I want to make this a bit more easier, okay? Well, let's just take a look at what I'll do, okay? Because it's something which I think you guys might want, uh, you might prefer this method, okay? <clears throat> All right, so what I'll first do is create a name. Okay, we'll call it func or function, whatever. And I'm going to do c library dot display like this, okay? What I just did was basically give, assign the function, okay? Not the function call, this is the function name, okay? I saved it in here, okay? Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do func dot arg types. Arg types basically has the argument types, okay? We're defining a function here, sort of, okay? Let me show you. What are the types here again? Well, we're using a character pointer, okay? You cannot use regular Python types over here because Python doesn't really have those, not, not really. What we need to do is use C types, okay? Because we're interfacing with C, okay? We're not using just Python. We're interfacing with C. So we need to use C types, okay? We need to use all these special types that are, that are in here. Byte, car, double, float, int, int 16. You need to use these, okay? Whenever you're exchanging data between the two, okay? So C int. This is our argument types, the argument types for this function. Okay, there is no return type, otherwise we would assign that in here, like c types dot, or actually, you know what, why, why don't we make a return type, why not? Let's just return this, and that might be a bit complicated, because uh, then we'll need to format this as well. Okay, you, you know what, let's just leave it like that, but we'll include a different return statement here. Okay, we'll return the string completed, okay? Completed for indicating that this function has been executed successfully. I'll just recompile this. What's wrong with this? Oh, of course. There, changed. And recompile, come back here. And I'll change this to car pointer, okay? Now, one thing important to note here that arg types over here is a list, okay? Because they can be zero or infinite number of arguments, but there can only be one return type. That's why this is not a list, okay? Now we have defined our function. We, we defined the function body, kind of, by giving it the same name, okay? By assigning that function name, we defined the arguments, we defined the return type, and watch the magic. I'm gonna pass in the same values John and 18, and watch what happens. There we go, the same function was called. Okay, and we did this in a much more user-friendly way. Like, would you prefer to type this out or would you prefer to type this out? Well, this, obviously, right? You don't need to include the c-library.display anymore, and you can just do it like this, okay? So this is actually a more user-friendly kind of way. You need to do some setup for it, which can be a little annoying, but, uh, it will pay off, okay? And this is a pretty handy way. So this is the alternate way that you can use for calling functions, okay? And with that, we're done with this video. Do go check out our next videos in the series, all right? They should be released just a few days after this one, they're on schedule, all right? So do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you receive all notifications when new videos come up, all right? Because we have a lot more content. There are dozens of Python libraries to cover and other stuff besides Python as well, other languages like C, C++, we'll take a look at all of those as well. All right, so without further ado, let's round up this video, okay? And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.